talk a little bit about PLC fives and migration to control audience. Okay, has anybody ever seen a network structure kind of like this? Yeah. Do you have a network, remote IO network? As you probably already know, the products to support these things are becoming difficult to, to get and to utilize because of computer technology. Um, we have a lot of products like a PCM CIA card, and good luck finding a computer that you can put one of those in. So that's the problem. And also, the PLC5 is all somewhere in, in this band here. It's, it's either obsolete, discontinued, silver, or I think there's still a couple that are mature, but they're going to be silver momentarily if they're not already. So, you know, that was 8 bit technology. So, so what we want to do is help you find a path to upgrade to the newest technology um, using the Ethernet network so you can get away from all the headaches of the old obsolete network, <coughs> get away from the old obsolete hardware that's becoming not only harder for sourcing, but also significantly more expensive. Um, I don't know if anybody's priced out a high-end uh, PLC5 processor lately, but it's well over $20,000 just for the processor. Really? 38000 yeah. you yeah. know? Yeah, time to move on. I'll happily sell you We'll happily sell you a Magneto microphone. But we'd rather convert you and save you some of the headache. But if you're going to buy them, buy two. <laughs> or three. That Four, works five. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple different options with the PLC5 system that you currently have running. You can leave it there, keep your fingers crossed, and buy that expensive processor when you need it. Um, you can do a rip and replace, like Matt talked about earlier. There's obviously some significant risk involved in that. Has anybody ever uh, chased the stray neutral? I'm not going to say anymore. Um, you can do a, a stepped migration like we spoke about earlier with the slick where you, know, you pull out one of the PLC5 racks and you put in a new ControlLogix rack. Um, but we also have a wiring migration system that's going to save you some headache and you actually don't have to rewire any wires except for maybe the power. Um, save you tons of time. Uh, told very well. <laughs> um, again, you can go to the website and check the silver date. Okay, so we're going to step through a phased migration here. First step is to convert your logics code and then you can kind of piggyback a control logics processor here to watch the watch the system. It's going to run the code in, a, in like a monitor mode, so you can verify that everything it's trying to do is, is appropriate. You can troubleshoot your code before you actually enable any of it. And then the next step is going to be a, actually move that control logics processor into the, the command position where it's actually controlling the system. And you're going to have a 1756 RIO card or potentially a DH RIO card to allow it to talk on the Data Highway Plus network and also to the remote IO that's existing in your system. Next step would be convert your Data Highway Plus to Ethernet and upgrade your panel view. Next step would be go through and replace your I.O. And then finally, convert that to an Ethernet connection. And now you have a present, up-to-date system where you can get spares easily at a reasonable price. 
some of the tools that you're going to use to help with this conversion process. Uh, install base evaluation again, so you know what you have. Uh, integrated architecture builder. We have the same tool here that we had with the slick where you can put in, you can build your PLC5 that exists on your plant floor inside integrated architecture builder. It's going to convert it to what you need in a control logic system to do the same thing. Um, you can export that into proposal works, get your pricing. Uh, we have the Logix conversion program. It's the same, similar steps that you would do to convert a slick program, like we talked about. Again, make sure you validate your code before you put it into production. And the IO wiring conversion system, which I'm going to show you a video of. Um, so we talked about this. And the remote I.O. card, which is fairly new, it's a little bit different than the data, data highway RHO card. Um, this is for the control logic. Right. It, it's only remote I.O., but it's uh, a little bit better than the data highway card. It's going to actually give you performance equal to what you had in your SLIC, or I'm sorry, in your PLC5. So if you're doing remote I.O., recommend using the RIO card. If you need data highway, we recommend the data highway RIO card. As part of the phased migration. Right. That would be keeping the 1771 uh, That's correct. I.O. with an ASP module in the Yes. Right. right. For, the, for the first step, right. Because the uh, DH RIO 1756 card wasn't necessarily as powerful as, as this guy. Did you bring it down to the compact logic platform as well? Because that would be Usually control logic is overkill for a PLC5 or a PLC2. Depends on the system. It can be. And it, if you wanted to go from a PLC5 to a compact logic, compact logics, if you're not going to have that same phased approach. It's going to be more of a kind of a one shot. Okay, let's talk about phase for a second for that that scenario. So maybe step one is I have another control logics in the facility. I convert the code. I run the remote I/O off the uh, off the control logics, and then you know I have like a migrational control logics. And then when I do my final rip and replace, I'm using one of the one of the compact logics. And I when I pull out the network, so that's a that would be an example of a phase migration with a four slot rack and a, and a control logics yeah. processor. Oh. And then you move that control logics processor on the next machine. Yeah. Here, same thing with the code conversion like we talked about previously with the slick. Um, okay, so the actual wiring conversion system, this is uh, this is where you're gonna save a lot of time. Um, <coughs> and stress? What's that? Time and stress. And time and stress, yes. Um, so what you're actually gonna put in this conversion module directly into the PLC5 rack. And then we have this uh, cover plate that goes on top of that. So you're actually, uh, I'll show you a video, but you're actually going to replace your PLC5 rack with a conversion rack. Put these conversion modules in, connect the conversion cables, and then put this plate on here, which is pre-drilled, so you don't have to do any drilling in your cabinet, because um, all the holes are already pre-drilled and lined up for the new rack. And connect the cables, and it's good to go. Like. Typically saves 10 hours per rack of rewiring. All right, so let me show you the video. At least 10 hours. Just yeah, that's if, you, if you're, you know, you can use your right and left hands equally. Not everybody is. That's and, and that's the that's the stress he was talking about. Is that if you don't if you don't rewire it, you know everything's in the same place it was. When you rewire it, you hope you get it back. Depending on how expensive your machines are, you may not want to 
That's it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> and there are no plans for those wiring harnesses to get the Silver Series. That they're going to be around for quite a while too. The um, actual arms that you're using to on both systems. What's the typical cost of something like that? It it varies depending on what the configuration system is before the conversion. So we usually would approach on a case by case basis. Um, but you can download integrated architecture builder build the system, uh, it tells you what to convert to, and then you can export that to the full doors with your pricing file. So if you want us to step you through that process, we can do that. Well, something like what we saw, roughly. I would have to put it in the top of my head. Um, what happens if in the future you um, If, say, the one of the conversion modules went bad or the cable somehow got caught or something, what I would recommend at that point is probably just actually hardwiring the card, the actual control logics card. You could replace the, the conversion module pieces if you wanted to, um, if you needed to be, you needed to get your uh, machine back up and running immediately and you had those spare parts on hand. If you didn't, you could just wire it to the existing control logics card and then eventually uh, you, know, you have the whole thing converted if you need to. So that'll be part of the phased migration, right? I mean, if you have to wire one card, that's going to take, you know, if you've got a, you know, a 12 slot rack, that's a little easier. There are some space considerations. Um, Control Logic's rack, as you probably noticed, is a little bit wider than the PLC5 rack. And your total depth is going to be a little bit more than your original PLC5. So, uh, it's definitely important to do some space calculations before you purchase all these parts. Um, another consideration is going to be if you have a full PLC 5 17 slot rack with all I.O., um, if you go to a 17 slot control logics rack, you're going to have to add a communication module, whether that's uh, control net or ethernet. Um, in the PLC 5, that was built into the processor. In the control logics, that's uh, modular and separate from the processor. So if you had a full rack of 17, you may have one I.O. card that you cannot fit into the new control logics rack. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, any other questions? Or?